Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. State of Amazonas versus Catherine Miles, accused of the premeditated murder of Jose and Mary de Vega under Articles 25 and 91 of the Penal Code. Now you listen to me, my little girl. Whatever you do, enjoy it. Times are bad. Never give up on life, whatever the price. Live, Kathy. It's the only thing that counts. Nothing else means a damn thing. Were you aware at that time that the jungle still has tribes of headhunters? Yes, but they were unreal dangerous to me then. obvious that only someone suffering from a total mental aberration could have committed such a horrible act and have the strength to do so, especially one so young as Senorita Miles here. You've just heard the trailer for this number 42 of the 88 Films Italian Collection. This is Amazonia, the Catherine Miles story. According to the 88 Films website, it says thusly, It took four years after the success of Umberto Lenzi's classic gut-ripper Cannibal Ferox for the Italian nasty native film to make a comeback and its first frightener to crawl up the jungle squalor was Amazonia, also known as White Slave. Telling of a frequently naked western blonde played by gorgeous grindhouse sex symbol Elvire Audrey, once again fairly sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, who is captured, stripped and tormented by a group of jungle headhunters. Amazona is perfectly fitting with the sleaze and schlock that this torrid trend became known for. Finally unleashed, uncut and in HD by 88 films, Amazonia is a must-see Italian shocker that perfectly complements the excesses of such video nasty gems as Man from Deep River and Cannibal Ferox. The special features on this disc are a brand new 2K transfer from the film um, original camera negative, original lossless mono English and Italian soundtracks, newly translated English subtitles for the Italian soundtrack, 
The last supper at the final days of the Italian cannibal film, which is a feature length 50 minute documentary and follow up to the award winning Eaten Alive, the rise and fall of the Italian cannibal film. It includes interviews with actors Michael Sockquiv uh, from Dinosaur Massacre, uh, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, sorry, uh, directors Ed Sanchez from Blair Witch Project, uh, Rogero Diodato from Cut and Run, and academics Michael Coven and Carol Waddle. You also get uh, an Italian in Amazonia interview with cameraman Federico Del Zoppo. You also get the original trailer, a booklet and alternative art. The technical specs are it's region locked to region B. The audio is DTS HDMA dual mono. There's a lot of letters here and a lot of words. Uh, picture is 1080p HD 1851. The runtime's an hour and a half. Ling languages English and Italian although I'm struggling with my English today and the subtitles are in English so yeah I had never heard of this one before at all I'll be honest with you and those that have kind of listened long enough know that I have a kind of vague passing interest in the cannibal subgenre I think there's a couple of stellar kind of movies from that one I think Cannibal Holocaust is one of the more important movies uh, made in the horror genre in general. Even though I don't particularly like watching it, I think it is a masterclass on deception and lulling the audience into... or fooling your eyes, really tricking your eyes to what you see. And infamously on this show, with the Baz, uh, we had him proclaiming that he is convinced that someone died during the making of that and that was some 40 years after the release of the movie which to me once again shows the power of that movie and how it can still impact today. Now that being said I actually really enjoy some of the 70s output. Uh, Man From Deep River is a movie that I quite enjoy and this movie owes a lot more to Man From Deep River than it does to Cannibal Holocaust but at the same time Movies like Ferox, as schlocky as they are, are okay. I enjoy them. Uh, you know, we're, we're fine with that. And in this collection thus far, we've already covered other ones. We, we looked at a little bit of the, the kind of D'Amato sleaze um, covering the, the kind of Black Emmanuel movies as well. So moving back into this territory, I wasn't sure what mid-80s cannibal subgenre output would look like. Now, the documentary they talked about before, Eating Alive, The Rise and Fall of the Italian Cannibal Film, really did cover the heady of the subgenre and subsequently teased, so to speak. That's why the, the new documentary, The Last Supper, is, is so interesting as a, a kind of companion piece to the original documentary. It kind of showed that things started to die out, interest waned on this subgenre pretty quick. And Amazonia, I think, is a testament to why that is when you sit and watch it. This movie is highly derivative. I mean, it is bringing absolutely nothing new to the table at all. It is a very bland kind of man from Deep River. It essentially, it is the man from Deep River for all intents and purposes. Um, this time, though, kind of leaning more towards, let's get, uh, you know, a naked woman running about the place, which they do, and trust me, it is not sore in the eyes, it is, um, the cameraman knows, and the director know where to put that camera, and uh, exactly how much skin to show, which is apparently quite a lot of it. It covers a lot of the same ground that you've already seen in other kind of cannibal movies from this region of the world. And that we get the, you know, the the rape sequences, the tribes people eating gross things, quote unquote, the tribes people killing themselves, internal factions, a kind of almost Stockholm syndrome, falling in love with your captor, sort of story at the middle, and it does all that, but it does it without any of the the grit that you would have got like five six years before. It's interesting how tame. This movie is in comparison, and I'm not going out there to say I need nothing but violence and animal death. I don't need that at all, but once you've seen that, and once you grip that as the norm, the baseline for the subgenre, coming to watch the Catherine Bell story is kind of like watching a little bit of softcore porn on, you know, on a, a, a late night station. There's nothing here except mild, mild, mild titillation. I mean, this is essentially the, the, the kind of the sexual equivalent of, of rubbing the tip and nothing else. There's 
and there's a few bits where I thought this is kind of interesting. Some of the practical effects are surprisingly well done. Severed heads in this movie look kind of great. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool. There's some really good editing as well. There's a, a, a knife stabbed to her stomach at one part, which is such a quick kind of cut with the camera, but it looks real. And I thought that was really, 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 really interesting. But out with that, it's a. Uh, at its core, it's this kind of woman standing... We start with this woman standing trial, uh, recalling how she went missing in the Amazon um, and how it led to her killing her uncle and aunt. And that is the most tedious part of this entire story. And then ultimately where she ends up at the end uh, as this woman who, for all intents and purposes, seems to be doing quite well for herself. And... It's just, I don't know, even even down to the score, the score of this movie, the theme, you probably hear it, it's playing in the background of this review, is like a tame version of the Cannibal Holocaust theme. It's so... It's so non plus. It's so scared to take risks, the animal death in this, because we're now in a time period where that's maybe not as acceptable. It's just wildlife footage of cheetahs killing people. Um, well, not people, animals. And that's what you're getting, and that's it. It's like, oh, that's all we can show you, that's all we can show you. I've seen cheetahs, maybe it's a leopard, actually. Um, but that's all they can show you, really, because we've, we've moved beyond that time period of just willful death of animals at the hands of man. Even the... Even this... The, the, and this sounds really bad, and it's a sense I don't have... I hopefully won't have to utter too much. But even the scenes of kind of rape in this are handled in such a way which... You know, it just doesn't feel the fitting of the genre. Kind of feels kind of cheap and hokey. And that's just kind of how I felt going through this movie. I genuinely felt this is someone who has been given green light to do work on this one, watched a few movies and made the box ticking exercise of how to make a cannibal Italian movie without any of the understanding of what actually brought those movies to prominence and what brought those movies to prominence is controversy. Um, controversy is king and is key when it comes to this specific subgenre. You need to be nasty, you need to be out there and it's not just about the titillation. Um, if anything, this is more kind of on the kind of titillation end of something like the Emmanuel movie, although there was a whole hell of a lot of vagina rubbing in that, um, than it would be, like I say, some of the ones that it is trying to ebb for sure. Overall, I just found that a wholly bland movie. It just felt like... It just felt like the director wasn't fully committed to make something... biting, <laughs> if you excuse the pun. That also being said, though, I can appreciate some of the craft here. Like I say, the score is a rip-off Cannibal Holocaust score, but it actually works surprisingly well with the movie. The cinematography is done really well. The design of the kind of practical effects is done really well. The acting at the beginning, well, the acting as the central lead, uh, the actress who is playing uh, Catherine Miles, the Elvary Audrey, is surprisingly good. Uh, she, for what she's doing here, she can hold her own. The dialogue is a bit twee, but we can kind of get over that. And its central message is wholly dumb, and we can kind of get over that. And when you put all that out, it's just a very vanilla movie. It's a, it's, it's romancing the stone with some head decapitations and a bit of titillation, and that is really all you've got here. And as a result, I kind of felt a little bit let down. I kind of felt like if you were going to come back swinging to bring the genre back, you come back biting, don't you? You come back with something hard hitting, something that forces a listener to say, God damn, why have I forsaken thee, said Cannibal's genre. I want to watch more of you. And the movie just doesn't do that at all. It just kind of fizzles and kind of disappears like a, a fart in the mist. I wasn't really a fan, if I'm honest. And this is the first one in the Italian collection for a while, which just kind of felt needless. It's, this is a title you're putting out, not because there's a a hardcore clambering for it, but this is for completionists out there to say they have seen all the Itali uh, Italian cannibal movies without quality control. And I've said this before, it's not my place to dictate or dictate to a, a label 
what they should and should be shouldn't be putting out. If it was not for this Italian uh, series, I would not have seen movies like The Mercenary or Navajo Joe. Two movies which I saw three weeks apart, and I genuinely think are stellar entries in that collection. Two five star reviews from me. But the counterpoint is that, and you could argue that with the success of those movies, you get an opportunity to put out lesser known movies. But I think the way you sell this movie with your marketing is that this is going to be something that it's not. And it's akin to what they did at the time to get bums in seats to watch these movies. Is, oh, well, this is, you know, even calling this movie Cannibal Holocaust 2, which it was known in certain territories, is giving it a, a false indication of what you're getting here. I think they're right in their blurb that Man From Deep River is probably the most apt and you could probably double bill this with Man From Deep River, which is an infinitely better movie. And you have an interesting double bill. But yeah, th this is this is a... It's not a bad movie, that's the thing. It's just not a great movie at all. And when it comes to reviewing with a grade, I give it a 2.5. I can't give it anything above 2.5. It is bland, right down the middle, kind of hokum. And I, I don't really have anything else to say about it.